<laughs> well, uh, Tony. Bless you for coming in. Bless you for coming in. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. I just announced your match. What is my match? Well, <laughs> I'll worry about that in a minute. We'll worry about uh, that later. Uh, but uh, I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure if you'd come in. You didn't have to. This is above and beyond, ladies and gentlemen. Let's hear it first thing. Thank you. Sting and Darby, we were just singing your praises. Unbelievable. Thank you. First question. Um, Lyric Swinton, SNME Radio. Thank you, Sting, for an incredible career. Um, question for both you and Tony. So, a lot of people have always talked about AEW's usage of legends and veterans, and there's so many people uh, above the age of 50 who are honestly doing some of the best work of their careers in AEW. So, for Tony, what do you hope to leave as a legacy for how wrestlers are treated, um, you know, in the final stages of their career? And for Sting, what made AEW so special for you to want to do your retirement run here? Well, first of all, I, I take it on a case-by-case -case basis, but tonight, first and foremost, this is the greatest case of all. This is the greatest of all careers, the career that spans the most history, and there's a generation of wrestlers, there's a generation of wrestling when wrestling was the biggest thing in the world that a lot of us grew up on. And there's one person going into tonight that was still wrestling. And for the past three years, he's carried this place. We're very fortunate the life sting has pumped into this place that we were the final stop on what is the greatest career of all time. So first and foremost, on a case by case basis, I just think of everything, it's in front of us. And tonight, the most important thing we've ever done was to give Sting the greatest send off we could. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to come here. I mean, the very first conversation I had with Tony uh, really, really said a lot because he, he just had something about him that just told me, I am going to make sure that you retire the right way, that you're going to go out the right way. I don't like the way you've been treated over here or over there. You will not be treated like that here. And I saw an opportunity, liked Tony, and I liked all the wrestlers, male, female, the whole package. So a lot of the same uh, behind the scenes people from WCW way back when. And uh, there's the brand just really seemed to fit me. I was their brand and they were mine. It's like, uh, you know, with WCW all those years and then to be with uh, TNA, it did kind of felt that way, but not really. It never really fully got there for me, and then WWE, it was never quite fully there for me. But this here, the whole package, I, I had just a, a, a great appreciation for the whole package, and the, what a good fit. And I was right. Hi, Joel Torres from Contralona. Um, congratulations, uh, what a great retirement tonight. Um, this question I asked Tony last uh, Thursday on the media call. I want to ask you this question. Now that you've retired in ring action, what are your plans? Obviously going home, taking your break with your family, but are you wanting to be involved in AEW at some other capacity? <laughs> well, Tony has mentioned me staying on board in, in some form or fashion. We haven't really worked anything out there yet, but I'm sure we'll we'll have some kind of conversation. And I'm I am saying, ah, you know, maybe we'll see what happens. Um, I have no interest in you know being a manager or anything like that, or an agent. I don't want to do any of that kind of stuff. So I, I don't. I'm not sure what what I could offer. But well, you're one of the greatest legends, not only, certainly the greatest legend ever in AEW, and I think one of, one of the greatest wrestlers, if not the greatest wrestler of all time. Nobody's ever had a career that has spanned more than yours, and what you've done for us here, we're all in your debt. So please, not only is the door always welcome and open for you, but I hope you will be back, and like I've said, we'll figure it out. We want you here. Well, yep, I'm willing to have a talk. <laughs> Gordon Lee with the Wrestling Observer. Um, I wanted to kind of talk a little bit about the early part of your career. Um, there was almost like a little bit of a crossroads with your career. You started obviously with Jim Helwig, the Ultimate Warrior, um, and you kind of separated a little bit. He went his way, you kind of went your way with 
Eddie Gilbert, Rick Steiner, you know, First Family. I just want to just talk about that part of your career and kind of at least kind of reflect a little bit on, you know, mm -hmm. now with with hindsight, um, was obviously, you know, was the right thing to split up and do different stuff. And basically just kind of just reflect on the on, on that portion of your career. Well, I think it was definitely good that we were both together to begin with uh, because, you know, he just, he looked like a, a, a freak, you know. I was 265 pounds and I looked like a little kid compared to him. But both of us together were, were pretty intimidating uh, and, you know, we had a lot of people saying, you know, Maybelline Road Warriors, I don't know if you remember any of that, but, yeah. But we thought, who cares, you know, let's, we get a match with the Road Warriors, we hit the big time. And so... Uh, but, you know, I think it was good that we ended up splitting up. It was good that he went his way and I went mine. We were not meant to be together. We were meant to start together, and it, and it got us in the, in the door for sure. But uh, he, he needed to be on his own, and I needed to be on. We were going to kill each other, literally, on the road. Two roided out young, young men. <laughs> Denise Salcedo, Instinct Boy. Culture. Well, that, I'm, I'm, that's what it was then. Two roided out guys. I mean, <laughs> yeah, just just shooting straight here. <laughs> that so, stopped in, in 1990 for me, so yeah, it didn't stop for him, but it stopped for me. Denise Salcedo, Instinct Culture. So my question to you is when you were backstage about to come out and make your entrance, and when you came out and you saw your sons, I want to get your reactions as to what was going on in your mind and how you felt during that specific moment. Well, I knew what I wanted it to be, and it came out to be pretty much what I had hoped that it would be. I just, I just wanted to, you know, and it was perfect too because we had the video that played before that, and you saw all the old, you know, Surfer Sting stuff, and with Rick, Rick Flair and the whole deal, it was great. And then when when Garrett came out, my oldest son as Surfer Sting, the reaction from the crowd. It was just what I had hoped that it would be, and uh, so it was great. I wanted people to go, is this, is this real? I mean, I, I wanted them to feel like they were going back in time, you know, and, and they did with the video, and then they did with Garrett, and I think they did with Steven too, as uh, Wolfpack, so it was just a, a phenomenal deal. I'm, I'm glad that we did what we did. The, 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 whole, the whole angle just was, it, it came together beautifully. Hello, Sting, Steve Fall from Steve, Steve, two Steves here. Great name. Uh, great name, very handsome name. Um, question for you, was it so hard for you to leave that ring? Because you were out there after the pay-per-view, Darby's giving you cues, telling you, hey, we're going to wrap. But obviously, you kept going, and that was great for the crowd and the audience. But how hard was it? Because if that's really the last time, yeah. then I imagine you didn't want to leave those ropes and eventually <sighs> yeah. go backstage. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's tough. I've, I've done it a few times, saying goodbye to some of these towns that I was going to never come back to again. And this one being the last of the last. Um, wow. And the history here in this town to boot. Ric Flair being there. Wow. Add Steamboat. I mean, again, the whole package. My sons, Darby, just, I mean, outstanding. It, it, it couldn't have been better. And it was hard to leave. Uh, you, you can tell that the fans don't want you to leave. And I don't really want to leave either. But I've never been really good with a microphone, so. That's why we said just stay. You did a great it's job. Great. Just yes. stay. Yeah. stay. One more. Yeah, man. It, it, it felt so good. And in the old days, you would have had to wait until the show on TV to see the rest of Steve's promo. We can just post it online now. So that's the great part. It's all online. <laughs> By the time you guys go backstage, uh, you know, you guys were all here. You saw it. And for anybody else, it'll be online by the time we're done with the scrum, if not already. Hi, Samantha Shipman from Daily DDT. Uh, first of all, thank you for everything. Uh, tonight was incredible. So this is kind of a two-part question. When did you decide that Revolution 2024 would be your last match? And was there any resistance to going out undefeated? Um, yeah, there was a little resistance to going out undefeated. There was resistance to going out as champions. There was <laughs> resistance to going out being, or to ever even getting uh, a chance to be world tag champs. <laughs> but it's okay. It all worked out. It was great. And so I'm, I'm happy with it all. It was great. Yeah. What was the other part when of the question? You, when did you 
when did you decide that this show would be your final show? Oh, well, Tony and I, we had a few conversations. We were kicking some ideas around, and he was saying, could you, could you maybe stay till Wembley? <laughs> 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 oh, man, Tony, I want to. I want to so bad, but I just, I, I, I could just, I was feeling it. It's just, it's time. It's just time. And it was, lot, Revolution yeah. was the three-year anniversary. Too. That was the three-year anniversary. I was going to get there. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, that, that, that's true. I mean, it, that's where it started. And so it's like so many things in all the years go full circle. For me and you know the whole revolution thing it was full circle so great idea for tony well if I, i've tried to get it another six months out of it but <laughs> i tried my best i tried everyone <laughs> thank you very much thank you for making this the greatest three years of my life and certainly i said before you walked in i think it's the greatest comeback ever in any sport ever and it's been the greatest send-off ever and the greatest last run ever and it wouldn't have been possible without, obviously, all the great fans. It wouldn't have been possible without Darby. But most of all, certainly 100% would not have been possible without you, Sting. Thank you. Wow. Let's try to keep yeah. it. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's true. I think it's really true. And, uh, you know, it's true. I said it before you came in. You, you're so unselfish. You're the, the greatest leader. You lead by example. You're a kind leader, a servant leader. You're one of the sweetest, most genuine, unselfish people I've ever met in my life. And of course you wouldn't fight to be undefeated. Of course you wouldn't you know, fight to take the spotlight, but you deserve it. You deserve the spotlight. You deserve everything. And the final showtime uh, was something that I think was the culmination of what I believe is the greatest career in the history of pro wrestling. It spanned more decades, more opponents, more companies, and I thought tonight was, for me, one of the greatest nights of my life. Thank you. What are you doing afterward here, Tony? Maybe we can talk. Well, we'll okay. <laughs> visit. I want you to... Like, I, I who wouldn't want to stay around listening to that? <laughs> well, maybe I could have talked to him. Maybe I had done more of that. I could have gotten more six months out of it. But, uh, <laughs> but, but, I, but it was a perfect... Uh, Perfect way to get to tonight. Uh, you know, I'm I've, I'm gonna stay here with you as long as it takes, and I'll, and and uh, I've got an 8 a.m. Uh, NFL fan engagement and major events committee. Roger Goodell scheduled an 8 a.m. meeting for me the morning after Sting's last match in Palm Beach. So uh, oh, that's brutal. good. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Brutal. But I mean, to be here is the greatest night of my life. Sting, Raj Prashad with Uprock Sports over here. When you reflect on your career. Where am I looking? Right, right back here. Oh, over there. There we go. He's in the rafters. <laughs> yeah. When you look back on your career, uh, obviously you end this run undefeated. A real treat for the fans um, to see you go out this way. When you reflect, how does this stack up for you when, when you're looking at kind of comprehensively your career? Obviously you just got backstage. Unbelievable last match. But when you think about that from that perspective... How does that stack up? Uh, I just left a meeting with, with the Bucks, and I told them, I said, this is up there with, you know, the top three matches in my whole career. And, and I, I mean, what, that's a big statement. I really do mean that. And uh, what a way to end it with AEW. And so kudos to the Bucks and, of course, Darby, of course, Tony. Um, it... it the whole thing could not have been any better, so. I think it's amazing that he came in during the pandemic when there was barely any fans and took a chance with just like everything considering he never had to get back in the ring again. And then to be rewarded at Wembley and setting the all-time attendance record in wrestling and then to have pretty much the whole pay-per-view revolution be based around this and the proper send-off with his sons and everything that went into it he this was all his baby and it's amazing that we at the end of the night can be like we did it and not have any regrets wake up oh man we we shit the bed last night <laughs> like we really like there's no regrets like this was amazing so thank you sting oh boy this is gonna be hard um Stu Meyer, sports guys talking wrestling, and I'm gonna cover this up. I'm gonna, I can't I've been see sport, it. So don't I've worry been about in sports media for over <laughs> 15 years. 
cardinal rule is fans stay out of the press area. First time I saw you was 1986, one half of the Blade Runners at a Mid-South house show in Longview, Texas. I've followed your career every step of the way. I got to meet you in 2018 and your lovely wife, and you gave me an interview, and we're 100% class. I don't have a question for every moment, every stinger splash, every scorpion death lock, every scorpion death drop. All I can say is thank you, Sting. Jeez. Thank you. Wow. Thank you very much. That means a lot. These kind of things don't bounce off of me. I'm, I'm taking it all in. Thank you. Great. I got to follow that. <laughs> Thanks, dude. Uh, Rick Uccino, CagesideSeats.com. This is actually for both Sting and uh, Darby. Uh, first off, Darby, my goodness, man. H how are you? Like, how do you feel right now after that? Well, insane I wanted to come here to let people know I was still alive. <laughs> I was in the middle of getting stitched up. It's just like, oh, hello. I was in the middle of getting stitched up, but I wanted to show everybody that, like, the doctors are on top of it. I'm still breathing. I was... Perfect. You know, it was crazy because as I flipped through it, they're like, "Are you gonna be continue?" I'm like, "Fuck yeah, dude, let's go!" <laughs> and then they're you're bleeding pretty bad, but I couldn't see, so I'm trying to watch the match from the glass, just like, "Oh!" But um, no, I feel fine though. And as long as Flair, Steamboat, Sting, the Bucks, everybody else feels fine, then we're beautiful. So, yeah, and then Sting, you know, you have to continue the match after that insane spot happens. Did you know he was okay in that instance, or was it still kind of in the back of your mind as you're trying to finish out the, the last bit of this, this match and you know finish out your career on the right, what, right note? Yeah, I always trust that Darby's gonna be okay. I mean, but this, this was pretty hairy tonight. I, I, I gotta admit, it was, it was, it was pretty hairy. Uh, and you know, let's not forget that the old guy went through a couple tables tonight too. <laughs> Nothing, not not like Darby, but I mean, come on, you know. I mean, anyway, um, yeah. And I was thinking about that. Okay, oh, God, get me through this. You know, help me to get through this table. Let me, let me, let me just finish strong. And man, I, I don't think any of us out there missed a beat tonight. It was just so much fun. I mean, I, I wish he wasn't all beat up and hamburger meat on his back, and you know, but. <laughs> But man, what a great memory, what a great night. Couldn't ask for better opponents, couldn't ask for a better partner, couldn't ask, for, I mean, to have my two sons involved. Uh, what a way to end. Tony, I'm, I'm grateful. I'm, I hope you are just so pleased. Thank you, I'm I love on it. fire. I love it. Yeah, man, I, I mean, it, I told the box, I said, man, I, this, this is it. But I mean, something like this makes me want to stay around. It's like, <laughs> maybe we could do Wembley, you know? It's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no chance. That would actually be a backfire <laughs> at this I, point, I, you know. I talked to the doctors. They gave me a, a doctor's note to claim Mount Everest. I'll be good. <laughs> I leave on March 27th. So, well, you got a match between now and then too, my friend. I, I just what is this match? So, uh, in Boston, ten days from now, you will, if you get cleared, which you know I might have to mark you down on the questionable. Also, in Boston at Big Business, with Sting going into the sunset after the greatest comeback and the greatest send off ever in wrestling or sports, I think. Darby Allen one on one for the first time ever in Boston, big business versus Jay White. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, he is literally, I feel like, one of the top acts here. And I'd love to get in the ring with Jay. And I want to just see mentally where I'm in after Sting retires and I you know you gotta remember it's been like three years I've had this guy next to me and he's been along every step of the way and this is actually my first like challenge as a solo act and Jay White good God <laughs> <laughs> well Darby thank you for uh, stressing us out yet again in another match and entertaining us and Sting, uh, just thank you for all of the incredible memories, uh, bringing us all here tonight to commemorate your incredible career. Congratulations thank and you. enjoy that downtime. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
I'll see you in a second. Thank you very much. I'll see you in a second. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. That was amazing.